friends, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. How the heck are you today? Uh, this is part two, friends, of an introduction to songwriting. Today we're going to be talking about creating your first melody. What? I can see that I'm slightly out of balance here with my camera. We must have bumped it at some point. Hey, how about that? There you go, right? All right. So, friends, hi. This is what we're going to be doing. This is the part two today where basically what we're going to be talking about is how melody should match with the chords. This is all stuff that your ear knows. It's kind of like when you know something intrinsically, but then when someone explains it, you go, oh, okay, well, I understand that. that. That makes total sense. And that's what we're going to be doing today is talking about how the melody or how the the, the individual notes should match the chords, like similar to what I was just doing just now. Uh, and so this is a code and as a really super, super duper easy to crack. Okay. And once it's shown to you, you go, oh my gosh, why did I wait so long to do this, to understand this? Okay. I said in the PDF that you're going to find in the description of the video, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube right now, there's a, there's a link there. I want you to be looking at that because it's very, very important. It's absolutely crucial to what, what it is that we're talking about today. And so you're going to see in there, after you read it, and after I show it to you today, you're going to see that all of this is based off of the major scale. We can go outside of this if we want, but until we get until we understand that everything is really based off of the major scale, even those things in a minor key, and even those things in a modal, uh, you know, modes are basically the major scale just starting from a different note. Every single mode, it's the major scale starting from a different note. Whether you know that or not, it's okay. I'm here to help you with that, okay? Now, yesterday we talked about this PDF, and I want to bring that up again because... Uh, we're going to be discussing this melody bit, okay? So, here you go. This is the PDF that you should be looking at yourself right now. You should have downloaded it because you're on YouTube, you're on Facebook, and you're clicking on that link, and you're getting that PDF, and then we're looking at it together, right? Instagram folks are with us today as well. Obviously, they don't have that option to do that, but they know where to go, okay? Now, yesterday... We talked about this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we talked about the whole step, whole step, half step, whole, 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 half, and that's what makes the major scale. Not only does that make the major scale, it also makes all the chords that we found in our pretty little colorful chart right here, where we have the chords major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Some folks may say, well, where are you getting all that? Where are you getting those major and minor and diminished, where are you getting that? I can tell you without taking three hours here to efficient or to to describe it exactly the way you would need to understand it. I've got plenty of videos for that inside my my unstoppable guitar system. But in order to save time and to get you there as quickly as possible, essentially, if you were to take this C, oh, so, so this is the major scale right here. You can see the, the C major scale, right? If you were to take the C, which is the one, and you were to take the E, which is the three, and you take the five, which is the G, and you put those three together, you get the C major chord. If you go to this two here, and you play the D, and then you skip two notes, and you play the G, which is the four, you skip two notes, and you play the B, if you play those three notes together, you get the Oh, hold on. I just messed up. I was looking at the wrong deal there. Here, it's the D, okay? If you play the D, if you play the F, and you skip and you play the A, so D, F, A, you have a D minor chord. Let's keep going, because eventually one of these is going to sink in. Let's say you go to the 3. You play the 3, you skip two notes, you go to the 5, and you play the G, okay? You got the E and the G, and you skip two notes, and you play the 7th note, which is the B. So together you play the E, the G, and the B. Guess what chord that spells? That's right, an E minor chord. Okay, you're getting it. Here we go. F, we'll start on this F here. Watch. We're going to play the 4. We're going to skip the 5. We're going to play the 6. We're going to skip the 7 play the 1. This is how harmony works. You usually don't play notes that are right next to each other. They sound like poo-poo. But, but if you skip, they sound really good. Okay, this is how, this is harmony. Okay, if you're like, that's weird. 
Okay, it's because you don't understand it yet, but this is how harmony works, okay? If you put two notes together, they're very close, you get that terrible sound. No one likes that sound. People like this sound, that's nice and harmonic, but this sound, that ain't gonna get you anywhere, okay? So, so we're at our C here, so we have an F, an A, and a C. So an F, A, C together, guess what chord that spells. I'm gonna give you one guess to say what chord that spells, those three notes together. Here you go, I'm giving you your chance. It's an F chord, you got it, good, you're, you're good at this. Okay, so let's go to number five. Here we go, five, five, seven, we're gonna skip over one, we're gonna go to two. Five, seven, and two. That's a G, a B, and a D. What happens if you put a G, a B, and a D together? Do you know what chord that spells? I bet you do. It's a G diminished, right? No, it's a G major, right? Because it's green here, and the one and the four and the five represent major chords, the greens, and the red chords represent minor chords, okay? And this purple chord represents a diminished chord. Don't worry about it, you'll probably never play one, or you won't for a long time. So we can play like 99% of all hit songs ever without playing the diminished chord. Diminished chord is one of my favorite chords. I'm not knocking it, I'm not diminishing it, uh, but it's an awesome chord. But for right now, let's just stick to the basics here, okay? So let's go to the six here. If we, if we play the six, skip over the seven and play the one, skip over the two and play the three. So we play the six, we play the one, we play the three. Guess what we have? We have an A, a C, and an E. Guess what chord that spells? Here's the hint. It rhymes with A schminer and I'm circling it right now. A minor, okay? You got it, it's A minor. Okay, so now let's go to the seven. We're gonna go to the seven, we skip the one, we play the two, we skip the three, we play the four. So if we play the B, we play the D, and we play the F together, guess what chord it spells? I'm gonna give you a hint. It rhymes with B diminished rhymes with B diminished. You got it, it's a B diminished, my friends. So that's how it works, that's how harmony works, right? So, let's think about this for a second. If we have all these chords playing C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and no other chords, I mean, no other notes, okay? We've got 12 notes all together in the chromatic scale. That's, if you will, if you're looking at the, the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, well, we have hues in between there, right? You can almost think about the major scale as Roy G. Biv, okay? Seven notes, seven colors, what? See the way that I explain my jazz chords inside my course, I use Roy G. Biv. Um, so we've got Roy G. Biv, we can think about that as the major scale almost, and then the hues in between it make up the chromatic scale. Chroma meaning color. What, is that true? Yeah, it is. So basically we're talking about the whole spectrum, if you will, when we're talking about the chromatic scale. So if we play from A, and we play all the way up, let me get a different tone here, friends. We play from A to A, then we get the entire chromatic scale, okay? There you go. Um, and okay, so that's how that's gonna work. I forgot that I didn't even introduce this whole daggone video. So before we go to the next part, because we're, we're going to another part here, I first want you to understand that, okay? So basically, if we have all of C, D, E, F, G, A, B playing chords, here we are, played a C chord, no sharps or flats, no sharps or flats, no sharps or flats, no sharps or flats, or no sharps or flats, is we're just playing C, D, E, F, G, A, B in some form or fashion or another, some harmony, okay? So no sharps, no flats. And so one might say to themselves, well, why would I play a note that has a sharp or a flat over that? And that's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Because it's not gonna sound right, at least the way that we're playing this right now, okay? Yes, later on we can, we can dabble, but don't be that guy or gal who's always trying to do, oh, this advanced thing when you don't have the basics down. It's a surefire way to fail, okay? Nobody in the history of ever has gone to an advanced level in anything, being a doctor, being a guitar player, being a soccer player, being whatever, nobody leapfrogs to advanced. 
In fact, it would be ridiculous to think that the advanced stuff is better than the basic stuff. Everybody uses the basic stuff. Uh, see Pareto's rule, right? 80-20 rule. It says that if you know 20% of the stuff, you can take care of 80% of the job. Mm -hmm. If you learn the other 80%, then you can get the other 20%. Seems like a lot more work, doesn't it? Yep, sure does. But understand that rule, okay? So, um, so before we go into the next part, let me say a couple things here really quickly. You should have downloaded the, the PDF by now, Facebook and YouTube, right? It's in the description of the video. You're looking at it right now. A couple things I'll point out to you because people, you're going to hear people ask about it a lot during the broadcast. I've got two links for you. One is my free series, my top 30 lessons that I teach all my students. Make sure you, you check that out if you haven't already. You're losing out by not watching that, I promise you. And then this dollar access gets you to uh, gets you access to everything. UGS and 365 gives you a 30-day trial of everything, okay? So, and then you're gonna read over this page right here. The information on this page, I kid you not, is the most important music theory that you will ever know in your entire life bar none. I'll argue it with anybody. Take it to my grave. This is the most important information. That's why it's in one sheet. That's why I provide it for you. Everything that we do in regards to music theory is based upon what you see right here, okay? And then kind of the next level is going up to this, okay? For those of you that didn't join us yesterday, basically if we take all the notes and we put them together, we get Oh, yes. Sorry. I, I totally, uh, thank you so much, Chris. I totally, totally uh, didn't have the PDF going on there. Um, so in this PDF, I'll mention it again. Here are the two links that you might need. I'm sorry. I thought I had the PDF up. Thank you, Chris. Um, or thank you, Mike. Uh, I'm, I'm crazy here. Uh, so diatonic harmony. This is literally the stuff that is, that if you don't know any music theory at all, know this. This is Pareto's rule right here. If you know this, you're gonna be able to know a lot about music theory. If you don't, I can't help you, okay? So know that. And then this part here is the part that, we've, that we're, we talked about yesterday in that the chords that are made up naturally, that occur naturally, your fingerprint, okay? You didn't design your fingerprint. You didn't design your DNA. It came with you, okay? So essentially, just think about music as this. It just comes with this DNA. If you wanna alter it, you can alter it, okay? But this is what naturally occurs in the cosmos, if you will. In a, major, in a major key, you got the one is major, the four and five are major, the two, three, and six are minor chords, and the seven is a diminished chord, okay? So for instance, if we played all these chords like a scale, but we played it like a scale, we got C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A, B diminished, C, okay? If we went to the key of G, right here at the bottom, here's G. If we play G major, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F sharp diminished, G. And it all works very nicely together, doesn't it? Sure. And if we wanted to break these rules, we could. But just like someone who breaks a rule, it's going to stand out. It's going to get attention, okay? So... All that being said, it may be something good that you want to do, that you want to break the rules. Lots of people have broken the rules when it comes to music like this, but get the basics down first. You know what uh, Mozart said? He said, or it was either Bach or Mozart, they probably both said it. They said, learn everything and then forget about everything. But some of you out there are saying, well, why would I even learn it if I'm going to forget it? It's the learning and having that built into your your being that allows you to forget it for it to come out naturally. That's what that's all they're they're saying. They're saying learn the rules. It will help you a ton. And then later on, don't be bound by the rules, but they're there for you. Okay. But you can't, there's no, you can't just be like, oh, I'm just not gonna learn the rules. If you are, you're gonna be like millions of other people. It's not nothing new. It's not a new thought. You're not like original to think that thought. It's just lazy, to be honest with you. I know I just lost some some students. That's okay. We need to get rid of some anyhow. We need to, we need to keep the people who are serious about guitar. So if that bothers you, then I'm sorry. Bye-bye. Um, I'm here to help you. Not to, not to pet you and make you feel better. I'm here to say, get your ass to work. Here's the stuff you need to, to know. Go, do it, okay? That's my job. 
Okay, so here's the deal. So just now, when I was playing this chord progression, I was just kind of thumping along here on a, a G, and then an E minor, and then a C major, and a D major. Okay, so now, look, the chords are G, E minor, C, and D. Now look at this. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, how do you know, Eric, how do you know the key of a song, right? And I said, well, there's several different ways. First chord, last chord usually are indicators. But again, we're a detective, right? We're trying to, we've got clues all around a room and we're trying to figure out what the clues mean, okay? So you, you may not be able to tell right away. So we gotta have clues. So if the first chord of the song is a G, and the last chord of the song is a G, that resolution at the end of a song where you're like, okay, that's the end of the song. Very good. You know, when you get to that point, well, that's a cadence and that's the end of the song. So that's that's why I say the first chord and the last chord usually, usually, usually underline it, bold it, circle it, everything else, because don't rely just on that. Just that's a clue. Okay. So we got that. And then we with the other chords and the other melodies that are being played are also fingerprints. They're clues. We're the detective, we gotta determine what key it's in. So, if I just played a G, and I played an E minor, and I played a C and a D, well, let's look at this, watch this. I'm gonna go along here, and I'm gonna say G, uh, G, E minor, C, D. Okay, so let's look. Here's a D, right? Is there a C? No, there's a C sharp, G sharp, no, that won't work. Skip, keep going. Uh, C sharp, nope, keep going. Because we said it's a G, E minor, C, and D. So right off the bat, if it's a C sharp, it's not gonna help. Oh, look, here, here's a C. Here's a D minor, that won't work. E minor works, G works. Did we say something else? No, that was it. Okay, so this one could work, but one of the chords is not right. Uh, G, 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 C, D, E minor, we got the D, we got the E minor, we got the G. Oh, cool, this one could work, but we got a C sharp diminished. Hmm. We'll put these two on hold. They're close, but they're no cigar. Okay, E, e we got no E minor. Uh, and the, the C's, D, G, they're all sharp. Forget that one, that's not even close. F, um, we got a G minor, nope, no good. We got an E diminished, no good. And the C, the D minor, the D is minor, that's bad. The only thing that's Original here is the C. Okay, so it's e. so far we got the, C, the key of C, the key of D so far. Let's look at the key of G here. We have a G, cool, we want that. We have a C, awesome. Get out of the way. Uh, we got a D, right? And we got an E minor. So we got a G, a C, a D, and an E minor. Hmm, well that so far is the best candidate, right? So it's kind of like we got all these suspects. They all may have the same shoe size. They all may have the same color hair, this, that, the other thing. But in this case here, there's one variable that's saying, it looks like it's this guy, okay? Looks like it's this guy right here. As opposed to being one of those people who just jumps on a bandwagon and says, oh, hey, this is it. Don't be that guy. You got to investigate, okay? So now, when, when I was playing, when I was noodling around just now, I was specifically playing, I mean, I was improvising, but I had some ideas to where I might go on the neck because I was using scale shapes and chord shapes that I'm familiar with, okay? And I was using G major and G major pentatonic. Those were two forms that I was thinking in my head this whole time while I was playing. Well, guess what? The key of G major is right here. All these notes right here. So if these chords are playing and the that melody is playing on top of it, well, it's going to sound really good, isn't it? Yep. 
You're right. It's going to sound a lot better than if I start grabbing all these sharp notes because they're not even in the key. Okay. So this is what we mean by the melody and the chords need to match. Okay. And this is why I say by if you have any emotion in you whatsoever, then friends, you can be a songwriter. Okay. All right. Um, because if you know, if you've got emotions in you that comes out, in a melody, you hum a melody, you're a songwriter. If you play a chord progression on your guitar, you're a songwriter. It's just that you you may not be to the level that you want to be at. But if you pick up a guitar and you do this, guess what, my friends? You are a guitar player. You just write at the beginning, okay? Uh, most people would not call a baby less than human, okay? So, a baby is a human. It's just hadn't grown up yet. That's it, okay? A uh, guitar player is the first guy, first gal who puts their finger on the guitar and does that. You're a guitar player, okay? So it's just you're at the at the beginning point of it. Uh, and you're, where you go with it is infinite. There's no stopping you. It's only, you. You're the only person who can stop you or or keep you to keep going, okay? So with all that being said, you are a songwriter. We're going to investigate this uh, a little bit further, okay? We're going to get to some questions here in just a moment. Um, I know this one was a little bit shorter today because I think you got the basic idea, but we're going to get to some questions here in just a moment. First, before we do that, I got a few things to tell you. First off, share this video, friends. Please share this video right now because if you do, it puts you in the running for winning a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. We've been doing this for a long time, friends. We've given away, no joke, close to a million dollars worth of guitars, uh, courses, books, et cetera, et cetera. We love giving stuff away. We love helping folks out. Yes, we got to make a buck every now and then in order for me to keep the lights on and so I don't have to go work as an accountant or do something else. Uh, work as a banker. I used to be a banker. I used to be a realtor. Uh, I used to do a lot of things. I was always teaching guitar and playing guitar, but I got to keep the lights on. But other than that, we love to give lots of stuff away. So share that right now and we always pick a winner after the broadcasts and we say, hey, this person won. So pretty cool, right? It's an opportunity to do that. Do it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all those different places. Uh, the more you do it, the more chances you have to win, okay? If you do it one time, you get one chance. If you do many, we're gonna see you more and the chances go up, okay? So that's that. Um, you noticed a new guitar with me today? It's right here, made in Corona, California, friends. This is a brand new mint condition American-made Fender Telecaster. And this is going to be what I'm giving away on November the 3rd, this November 3rd, at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. No, Eric, you mean 11 a.m. No, I mean 9 a.m. this time. Uh, I happen to uh, have another event that I need to do, that I need to go to. And uh, so we're starting at 9 a.m. this time because I want to get a full four hours with you. You know that I like to thoroughly teach and I like to thoroughly answer your questions and I like to thoroughly give away lots and lots of stuff. So November the 3rd, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be giving away over $6,000 worth of goodies and I'll be teaching you how to build a solid foundation in any genre of guitar, whether you are a day one newbie or a seasoned veteran, okay? So, be looking out for announcements for that. In fact, I think we just released a video today of me at Groon Guitar as I was getting the guitar. Um, we were getting audio through my my AirPod, so I apologize that the audio is really weak in the, in the video, but we've got some samples of the guitar. It plays amazingly. I've been using it for, for band practice for a gig that I got coming up right now, and I love the tone of it. It's amazing, um, and it plays like a race car. Okay, so, Without further ado, let's get to some questions, my friends. And today, we're going to start on, I'll tell you what, we're going to start with, we're going to start with YouTube. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because we usually start with Facebook. So we're going to start with uh, with YouTube today. Friends, this is your opportunity to ask me any questions that you have about guitar, any questions that you have about my courses, about the free stuff, about the paid stuff, whatever, you ask away, friends. You can even ask personal questions. Doesn't mean I'm going to answer them, but ask away. 
Uh, okay, so here we go, and I'm on YouTube, and I'm looking for question marks, okay? I see Mike just put a couple question marks. And Mike, you're going to have to get a little bit more specific about that. Okay. Um, all right, so here we go with the questions on YouTube. When playing in the key of A, say blues music, how do you know which bar chords or where to bar? Jonathan's saying. Jonathan, so when I hear a question like that, I have to assume that there's certain fundamental things that you don't understand. And that's great because guess what? Nobody knows them in the beginning. So you're in a good place. You're in the right place. Uh, no one knows this stuff in the beginning. So there are some fundamentals that you've got to know, Jonathan. And there's no way for me to accurately answer that without you knowing some fundamentals. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you're playing blues music and you wanted to, I mean, I could tell you just straight off, but you're not going to understand it most likely. So if you're playing in the key of A, say blues music, how do you know which bar chords? You don't, unless you have the knowledge that I'm telling you about now. And I cover that knowledge in those first 30 lessons. There's a reason that I give those out is so folks can play along with me here and we can move forward. Jonathan, watch the series, the free series that I'm providing for you today. The link's in the description of the video. It's yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It's the first link that you're going to see inside of that PDF. And it's also right here, okay? Start there because there's some bits and pieces there that you need to know about. Uh, Jonathan, also, if you are just like, I just want to know that song, I don't care about knowing anything about guitar, then on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage 12 Bar Blues, and I'll show you exactly what bar chords to use. I mean, technically, you're going to use an A7, a D7, and an E7, but you may need more information, and that's why I want to provide that for you, okay? Okay, it seems note reading imparts more information than tab. Correct, Bob. Is it better to learn more reading first or tab? Would it be easier to learn note reading if you already know tab? Okay, so it, it would be easier to learn note reading, uh, musical notation, if you already know tab, just because you have a, a little bit basic, basic better idea of the guitar neck and those sorts of things. So yes, indeed. Uh, musical notation does provide more information because tablature is typically meant for folks that know songs already. They know the melody and they just need to know what the fingering is, okay? But yes, reading music, there's more of a learning curve to it, but there's more information involved. And if you're reading music often, then it's a great way to, to, to express yourself and to learn music that, from scratch, uh, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So, and I have a book on that uh, on Amazon. If you ever want to check that out, just uh, type in um, how to read music. Bar chords, question mark. I just can't do them. Can you give me some tips? Edward, yes, I can. First, I'll, get, I'll tell you where to go to, to get these tips, but then I'm also going to show you very quickly because there's a lot of information here and I have videos for this already. So, Edward, first off, the basic techniques that need to be developed are covered in the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. If you don't have those basics down, you're not going to play bar chords. You're just not. Because the basics are what get you there to be able to play these bar chords, okay? Now, with that being said, Edward, the thing you want to do is you want to hyperextend your finger, meaning you want this, instead of the finger to curl that way, you want it to curl this way. And so in order to do that, you put a lot of pressure on the first finger. You are on the tip of the first finger, and then you're going to be a lot better on playing your bar chords. With that being said, that was just the tip of the iceberg for what one needs to know in order to do that. And I have lots of videos on bar chords and how to do it. On YouTube, search your guitar stage bar chords, the effing F chord, that's E-F-F-I-N-G, search that one. Just on YouTube, search effing, E-F-F-I-N-G, F chord, you'll find it. Uh, otherwise, Edwards, start on that free series because I promise you, once you know those fund fundamentals, you cannot be stopped as a guitar player. But if you don't know those fundamentals, you're just not going to go beyond the real basic level. And you're going to always wonder why you can't get above a certain level. Okay, for sure. What's my favorite key? I don't really have a favorite key. Maybe, okay, maybe A minor. I love A minor because I'm so used to playing it. A minor and E minor, two my, my two favorite keys. 
Um, Mark, yes, that does count as a share via email, but the one that we'll be able to see is the one on Facebook. So I appreciate that. Thank you, buddy. Uh, I need to progress with my major and minor transitions when in the blues scales. What can I research to learn more about it? I need to progress with my major and minor transitions. I don't know what that means, Adrian. You'll have to explain that, what you mean by minor, major, minor transitions. When in blues scale, what can I research to learn more about it? But if you're, just, if you're talking about major and minor blues or major and minor pentatonic, then Adrian, on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Blues on Your Guitar Sage Pentatonic, where I talk about the minor, uh, especially the pentatonic, when I talk about major and minor, how they mix. You could insert the word blues scale for pentatonic because they're really, really close to the same note, uh, same scale. They're one note of, of difference. Um, that will get you the knowledge that you need to understand about that, my friend. Great question. How do I know how to fit a melody to a chord progression? Micah's saying, great question, Micah. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. So, for instance, if I'm right here and I've got this chord progression, you know, like right on the bottom there, you see G major, right? The chords are G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished. So if you pick any of the chords out of there, they're going to work well together. Then your melody is also going to be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp in some form or fashion. There's an infinite amount of ways that you can play it. What's the right way? There is no right way. It's painting. You're painting with colors. There's no right way. Uh, if a three-year-old paints a picture and it's all jagged and crazy looking, you wouldn't say it's wrong. That's what the three-year-old paints. That's how he paints. So think of yourself as a three-year-old, and it's not going to sound very good at first. You're going to be playing outside of the lines, like you're coloring outside of the lines, okay? But in order to get to where you can color well, you need to color a lot. In order to play well, you got to play a lot. So that's how you mesh them, okay? You take a specific key, take the chords from there, probably only pick two or three chords to play, and then play some sort of melody over it that matches those scales or that matches the, the, the notes in the scale there. Okay, does that make sense? Great question. What was my first guitar? It, I think it was called a Barclay, and I still have it. It's up in the attic right now, and it is a piece of junk. It is just a piece of junk guitar. Um, not disparaging it, it just is a piece of junk. And uh, so I just have it because it was my first guitar, so I keep it, but um, I should hang it somewhere. That's what I should do. I should hang that guitar somewhere instead of get it, keep, get it out of the attic. Never put your guitar in the attic, by the way. Do you have uh, learning to play by ear in your course? Indeed, Kara, I've got lots of learning how to play by ear in the course. If you want a little sampling of that, Kara, take advantage of the dollar offer today. The link's in the description of, well, it's in, it's in the actual PDF. So you download the PDF, the link's in there. That's your access to get into the course for a buck, and I'll give you 30 days access. Uh, when you're in there, Kara, in the upper left-hand corner, there's a search engine. Just type the word ear, and all my ear training videos will come up, okay? Okay, what do I think about David Lindsay? I don't know David Lindsay. I mean, I grew up with a David Lindsay, but uh, I don't know who that is, my friend. On the number system chart, column one is the low E on the guitar, question mark? No. On the number system chart, column one, Is the low E, is this the low E on the guitar? No. Think about it like this, my friend. Think about it like, okay, so look at the very bottom row. Key of G. You got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, okay? G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished. Those are chords that work well together. So if you're in the key of G, those chords work well together. Okay, because they're all chords that are in the key of G. None of those chords suggest another key. Okay, even though you have a C in the key of G and you got a C in the key of C, when you're playing those other chords, it points everything back to the key of G. So you could do this on any instrument and it has nothing, you could do this on any string. It has nothing to do with the guitar, it doesn't have anything to do with the, with the string on the guitar. It has everything to do with how music is structured. Does that make sense? Uh, if not, let me know.
and I'll explain it somehow. Major, minor, pentatonic, arabic, etc. How do they differ from each other? Vivic, they differ in their pattern. So the whole note scale just does whole notes. Okay. The diminished scale sounds like that, you know. Basically, we have all these different patterns. That's how they that's how they they differ. Lin, uh, Lindsley played with Jackson Brown. Oh, okay. Good. Well, I love Jackson Brown. So I love that. Yeah, so Vivek, um, the scales, they, they have different formations. They're different formulas, if you will. Eisen saying, on 365, you state 120 beats per minute. How do I know when to move on to the next lesson if I cannot hit the 120? Don't worry about the 120. That's just the fault, okay? Do not worry about playing it up to speed. As I say in the videos, your speed is your speed. That's where you're at today. You wouldn't worry, if you were three years old, you wouldn't worry about being five, would you? No, because you're three. And no matter how hard you try, you're going to stay three years old. Until two years later, then you're going to be at five. So the difference between playing, though, is that you can actually play more. But if you've only booked 200 hours on the guitar, then you're only going to be as good as 200 hours. You, you're not going to be as good as 2,000 hours, no matter how much you wish and pray. So, um, and I believe in wishing and praying, but I also believe in hard work. So, with that being said, don't worry about the 120 beats per minute. You are where you are, Ison. okay? And you know how you're done when you're like, okay, I've had enough today. Let's move on to the next one. Or you get bored or something like that. But really, any amount of time that you're practicing these, you're going to be great, okay? Is there a way to check if a melody you come up with already in some other song you are unaware of? William is saying. Nope, there's not really a way to do that, William. Uh, someone will probably tell you, you know, if you play a melody and it sounds something like this. Okay, then you might, then someone says, well, that sounds like Stairway to Heaven. You'll be like, nah. Um, listen up. If somebody says that sounds like something, then listen to that song. Uh, just be open, okay? But that's the way to find out. I understand chords, but don't understand what makes up melody. Can you distinguish between the two? Gene, um, melody is just notes. That's a melody. It's one, single notes. Chords are more than one note. Uh, why were you not at GitCon? At GitCon? I don't know anything about GitCon. I'll have to... I'll have to find out about it. GitCon. I go to uh, the NAMM show um, every now and then. But uh, the reason I was not at GitCon is because I was probably making videos for you guys. <laughs> I don't... Uh, I do this a lot. Okay, when will the Guitar Sage guitar be ready to order? Shad is saying. Shad, I wish it were sooner than it is later, but it, it's this is just... It's a long process. I've actually gone to several guitar manufacturers and all of them have a minimum six month waiting period just i guess because so many folks in nashville are are uh, making guitars or wanting to make guitars i'm not sure key of a ade chords from the chart can i play the a pentatonic shape over all three chords or do i have to switch d pentatonic no uh android you can play the a major pentatonic over the a d and e you can do that. It's going to sound better probably than just switching every single chord. You can do that. It's more of a, a jazz way of doing things, but it's going to sound very disjunct. So just stick with the specific key. That's what I'm saying. So all the chords are, if you will, painting this background, and then you create the foreground with your melody, and the two will match up. Okay? It may not be perfect. It may not sound like Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen, but it'll sound good. Is the seventh column a fully diminished or half diminished chord? Uh, Bob, the since we're just talking about a three note chord, it's just a diminished chord. So when we talk about fully diminished or half diminished, we're talking about seventh chords. Okay, even though this is the seventh column, we're not talking about seventh chords, we're just talking about triads. So it's just a diminished chord. 
So fully and half diminished refers to seventh, seventh chord versions of diminished chords. Uh, Celeste is saying, if I want to improv over a chord progression I wrote following yesterday's video, thank you, Celeste, for doing your homework. Should I use the scale for the first chord or would it work uh, four, five, or any other? Celeste, if it's in the key of G, you're going to play the G major scale. Boom. That's your answer. If it's in the key of C, you're going to play the C major scale. I would not advise at this point to be playing every single, to be chasing the chord around. Number one, it's going to be the same thing. Um, kind of. Like if you play a C major chord and then a G major chord comes along, you don't want to play G major. At least yet. Okay. Later on, if you really, really, really just love jazz and you're that advanced of a player that you've dominated playing one scale over a chord progression, then, then Celeste do that. But until those two things happen, don't do that. Okay. Um, M. Prado is saying, I thought the red notes all the time were flats and sharps. How do I know they're, they're minor? Okay, I'm not sure what the question is here. I thought that the red notes all this time were flats and sharps. How do I know? How do I know they're minor? And Prado, you trust me in this one, honestly. Without teaching you a lot of theory, uh, a lot of folks, they don't want to take the time to go through those 30 lessons that build that foundation, um, then you just have to believe me, okay? That's the only way to do it. You either do the work and you research it, just like if you're hearing fake news and you're like, well, this is fake news, then you got to go do the research or you're like a lemming and you just post stuff on Facebook and you don't do the research, okay? Not saying you, M. Prado, I'm saying those people that just post stuff randomly and they don't do the research themselves. That drives me nuts. So either you do the research or you just have to trust that what you're doing is right. So um, if, you're in, if you're talking to me, I'm going to tell you that 99.9% .9 of everything I say is right. I say that because... I've said things that are wrong before, and I've come back and said, hey, that was wrong, I apologize. I was mistaken, or I tripped over my words, or I just didn't know it. Um, or I thought I knew it, okay? So, um, with that being said, yeah, you're just going to have to trust me on that one. Vivek is saying, can you please do a lesson on the acoustic version of Stairway to Heaven, including solo part? Possibly so, Vivek. i got lots of, lots of requests, and they're hard to get to them all. How do you know which chords to play from a melody that you wrote? Great question. Ray. So let's do this. Let's go back to this right here. So Ray, let's say the melody that you're playing matches, let's say it's all sharps and flats. I mean, no sharps and flats. And you see the key of C, it's the third one down. Key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Now those are the chords, G, uh, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. Those are all the chords, but the melody notes would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, right? Since we're only playing single notes here, you're not going to have chords, so you, you don't have to say major or minor. They're just notes, okay? So with that being said, if you play a melody and you got a bunch of C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, well then you know that you're in the key of C, and so the chords you would use are right there in the key of C. So you could use any one of those chords, and chances are your melody is going to work well with it. Now, it may not match it exactly, and that's something that you have to learn over time, and there's ways to do this. Number one, you learn some basic bits on the guitar. You learn some basic music theory and that sort of stuff. All the stuff that I'm teaching in that free course, and then over time from playing other songs, using your ear and what have you, it starts becoming easier and easier. Okay, I just got here now. I was wondering, are all the keys in the chart you showed major? Shane, yes, the ones that are on the screen here. Okay, but the ones that are in, um, let's see here, the ones that are here in the PDF. I've got major and minor. With that being said, ignore this whole section down here. I put this in here for people who love to make things more complicated and love to go the long way and love to not be productive and waste time and that sort of thing. I provided that for you guys. Um, otherwise, just think of everything in the major key, even if it's in a minor key. Take it from somebody who plays everything in a minor key, okay? Just think about it in a major key, except the six is the tonal center. 
okay? But everything stays the same. So for instance, if we have a song that's in the key of E minor, I'll play a song that's in the key of E minor, which is effectively G major. So here's my song in the key of E minor. E minor, C, G major, A minor, E minor, C, G, here's that A minor. So there's our tonal center. We had the C, we had the G, we had the A minor, but this is our tonal center. So everything stays the same. It's just, this is kind of center, if you will, okay? That's all, that's how you want to think about that. Okay, cool. Cool. So the top, the top ones are major and the lower ones are minor, but just think about everything major, okay? What song should I learn, try to learn first? I'm a beginner. Steve, stop what you're doing, Steve. Stop, stop, stop what you're doing. Go to yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It's a free course. You can't complain about that. And I teach you how to play. I think Amazing Grace is in there, but... Steve, the reason I'm saying is to start there is because I don't know what fundamentals you do know or don't know. Okay, if it's your first song, you probably are pretty new. And you said I'm a beginner, that would clue me into maybe you're a beginner, so you'll want to start there. After that, Steve, go to YouTube, type in your Guitar Sage and your favorite artist. Your Guitar Sage Elvis, your Guitar Sage Clash, your Guitar Sage Beatles, and you're going to find a slew of songs for people that I, um, that I have taught songs from. Okay, cool. Okay. I met David Lin Lindley. He played on Jackson Brown's early music, early acoustic, question mark. Um, cool. I'm not sure what the question is there, my friend. Okay, Celeste. Um, okay, so that's not for me. Can you switch keys within a song or borrow chords from other keys? How often is it done? Fantastic question, Just Cho. And you used the right words, borrow chords from another key. So yes, you can switch keys within a song, right? So you have... Um, This is Pink Floyd, right? Um, this is uh, Comfortably Numb. But then later on, key change. Kind of a key change. Essentially, we're going to the relative minor, which is a key change. We're changing the tonal center. I use this one a lot. People say it's very helpful. Think about someone having an opinion on Facebook. I know this never happens, but let's just say someone got on Facebook and they had this political opinion. I hate because he's a right? You got that guy. And then you got this guy who says, no, he's not that because he's right? And they're talking about the same guy or the same issue and they're using the same words and they're shouting at each other and they do da 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 da. But they're obviously talking about, they're coming from two different standpoints, right? Someone who's pro-war, someone who's anti-war, right? Whatever it is. Talking about lives, talking about guns, talking about freedom, talking about da-da-da-da-da. But they're obviously coming from two different standpoints. You can think about major and minors the same way. Watch this. So, bottom line there, key of G, right? The key of G has all those chords that you see there right at the bottom. G, A minor, B minor, etc. I won't keep saying it. If we were in the tonal center of E minor, it would use all the same chords. It's just the way you play the chords, starting chord, ending chord, that sort of thing, the melody, is going to dictate whether it's speaking of G major or if it's speaking towards E minor, okay? That's major and minor. So in that case, you can go back and forth. That's called relative major and minor. I have lots of videos for that inside of Unstoppable Guitar System to understand the basics of that, do the free course. If you hate going to any place other than YouTube and you love seeing uh, booby girls and, and, and cats jumping around then, and dis you're not easily distracted, then go to YouTube uh, and type in your Guitar Sage relative for relative major and minor, okay? And that will help you to understand this whole idea, okay? 
of relative major minor. That being said, there we're not really borrowing chords from other keys. We're using the same chords. It's just the way that we're using them determines those the, the changing of those tonal centers, okay? Just like using our words, we could sit here, I could say, well, war is wonderful. War is wonderful because it keeps us free and, and this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're talking about guns and we're talking about war, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, now I'm changing my stance and I'm talking about guns and war and freedom, but I'm then I'm saying, no, gun, uh, war's terrible and we really need to keep the guns out of hands of people. And, and all of a sudden, now I've changed my stance, major and minor relative major minor. We're just changing the way that we're using the chords. That being said, just show, we can also change keys to just straight up other keys, okay? And we can do this many different ways. We can do uh, what my ex-girlfriend uh, often called the crowbar method. She's a violin player in the symphony, amazing violinist, but like to go... <laughs> Crowbar up. So that's what he, she called the crowbar method, just going up <laughs> type of thing. Because she used to play violin and she'd go, well, she still does, and she'd go, like it's a crowbar or something like they're lifting it up. Um, so that's that. That's, that's one way to do it. But another way that you can do it is borrowing cor chords from other keys uh, that will get you, that'll either move you into a whole nother key or just as you said, oh, and this wasn't just show. This was somebody else who said that. Who said that? Hold on. Oh, was, yeah, just show said it. Um, the other way you can do it is you can borrow chords, like one chord from another key and and it will suggest this new key. And then if you leave that chord and go back to the regular chord progression again, it just makes it more interesting. If you hang on the chord too long or go to other chords that are in another chord progression, then you're like that person changing their opinion right in the middle of talking. And now they've, they've changed their stance and now they're in this entirely new key, okay? But if you just borrow one or so chord from it, then you're, you're cool, okay? And it'll, I see either way you're cool. It just depends on what you're trying to do. Okay. Okay. Great, great, great. All right. I'm going to go over to Facebook real quick. I do not want to neglect my Facebook friends there. And uh, so here we go. And then I'll come back over to YouTube. We got a lot of, of folks tuned in today. I mean, the comments are going mad. So I love it. Uh, okay. Okay, and I'm just looking for those. Oh, Berlin, Jude. Hello from Berlin this time. Nice. Jude, that is my father's hometown. That's where my father was born. That's where my father saw Hitler in a friggin' parade. What? Yeah, my dad saw Hitler friggin' in the parade, and they would go and they would like jump on tanks and bend the antennas and stuff because obviously they didn't want, they didn't like the guy either, just like the Americans did. And it wasn't like everybody over there was Nazis or something. Um, dad grew up in Berlin. And his house, now, I believe the Italian embassy is sitting on where his house was. And we still own the property. And they offered us a few hundred dollars. Nonetheless, we didn't take it. We just said, no, you just be on our property. Uh, so, that, yeah, my dad's from Berlin. How cool is that? I've never been, would like to go. I want to visit Germany so bad, especially Berlin. I hear it's beautiful. Um, this is the guitar, Scott, right here. And yes, there's a video that's going to be coming out on YouTube today if it's not out already. Oh, there it is. Thanks for posting that. And guys, the sound on this, but by the way, someone just posted the, the, uh, uh, Mike, uh, Mikhail just posted the, the link right there in Facebook, but the, the sound is really bad because I'm, I'm got my AirPods on because we were trying to get the conversation. Uh, so the sound is terrible. I apologize, but I have more videos coming out with lots and lots and lots of examples for you guys. Okay. Okay. All right, looking for those with questions only. Oh, how to know the key of a song and play a guitar. Okay, well, to play a guitar, go to yourguitarstage.com slash 30, start there. 
Otherwise, you want to know how to play a guitar? You put your hands here and you noodle, 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 and you strum, strum, strum. If you want a real quick explanation, that's how to do it. Otherwise, you probably need more information, which is why I create lots and lots of videos. I don't like to be long-winded. It's just, if you're going to explain something thoroughly, you got to explain it thoroughly, right? Yourguitarstage.com slash 30. That's where you want to go. Okay, I'm done on Facebook for the moment. Now I'm headed back over to YouTube, and we're going to get to some questions there again. All right, here we go. Uh, Mike is saying, dang, folks, do the first 30. Indeed. Thank you, Mike, for letting folks know about that, you know. Uh, Mike Prado, I've written over 100 songs without knowing the key they're in. Should, should you rewrite, re, rewrite them all? I shouldn't because I don't have the time. But should you rewrite them all? No. Just keep them in whatever key you're in. Uh, here's the deal. Learn some music theory and Prado. Start at the free course, and you're going to learn those basics of music theory so that you understand what keys you're in. But don't take that away from your creativity. Leave whatever keys that you've written these songs and leave them in those keys, okay? You may decide later on after you learn some more things, hey, I want to do this so much easier. I don't have to play these bar chords, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But don't, don't do that otherwise, okay? Just stick to what you're doing. Okay, just Cho, is the chord progression still a variation of 1-4? five, six for minor keys. Just Cho, it can be, it can be, but usually in a minor key, uh, it's gonna start on the, the minor chord, whatever, you know, the six minor, and, uh, and usually in a minor key, you're gonna have more minor sounding chords, but it doesn't have to be. You could, you could use the same one, four, five, minor six, yes, for, for in fact, here's a one, four, five, minor six, here's a one, uh, minor six. So there's a minor six, four, one, five. Okay. All right, so. Ah, Jeff, the free 30 is great. Thank you so much, Jeff. I know a lot of folks think because I say free, they're like, my mom says nothing in life's for free. Okay, and then there's other people that are like, well, nothing, nothing good is free. Okay, well, guess what? Visit me, and I literally will charge you over a thousand dollars because my price just went up for my one-on-one -on -one lessons because I don't do one-on-one -on -one lessons anymore. I try not to, but my price just went up on those. So if you if you're like, okay, nothing in life's good for free, then come on down. I'll teach you the same exact material, but you'll be one-on-one -on -one with me in the studios teaching the same stuff, same guitar, same dude, same head, same hairstyle, and it'll cost about a thousand bucks and it'll make you feel like you've, like you've got a really good deal then, okay? Otherwise, you click on the link and you get it for free, okay? But really, it's honestly whatever you want to do. I have folks all the time come visit me here in Nashville and they say, hey, Eric, I'm in town. I really do want to take these one-on-one -on -one lessons with you. And I say, okay, we can, but all that stuff's out there for you. And a lot of it's for free. Uh, and they say, I still want to meet with you. And I say, okay, come on down. I'll take your money and we'll, you know, and we'll learn how to do this. I got to take your money because I'm taking time away from my family, right? But um, otherwise, I, I have it for free for you. Take advantage of it. <laughs> Mike Rooney, whoa, good God, y'all, what's it good for, right? I love that song. Good God. Okay. Does drop tuning change the chord? It does, indeed. Drop tuning changes the chord. Uh, William Leary, I hate FB, Facebook. I know. It's a necessary evil for me to get information to people, but it ain't my favorite either. Okay, I'm here. Do you do you have a band that you played with, and what genre do you like the most? No, I don't. I'm not playing in a band right now. I'm playing. I'm. I've got a gig coming up, so essentially, I'm playing in a band called A Way. But don't even look them up because, like, literally, I'm doing one gig with them. Uh, they're really a great band, though. But they're dis. They're they're uh, dis. They're they're breaking up. Uh, but this is the last gig, and I'm playing the last gig with them, which is pretty fun. My daughter's in the band. She asked me to play. Um, you might have seen the silly T-Rex uh, video that we did yesterday, and uh, we'll probably post that later on 
here uh, at the end of the program, so you can see it if you didn't. Uh, but nonetheless, I'll be wearing that, that beautiful outfit on stage playing guitar on the 28th of October. So come, if you're in Nashville, come out, come on out, see me. It'll be at the East Room in East Nashville. Do you have any, okay, and, and what genres do I like the most? Man, I love rock. I love rock. I love rock. I love rock. There I said it. I love rock. I love heavy metal. I love hard rock. I love classic rock. I like pop rock. Um, I like punk rock. I love blues rock. I love blues. Uh, I say I love blues. I love blues. Um, there's lots of, I love lamp. There's lots of stuff that I like, okay? I love lamp. Okay, so our finger placements on frets, our finger placements on frets can differ key tones. Jan Jan. I don't know what that means. If you can rephrase that, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Mike Rooney, they just don't know you, do they? <laughs> the no free good folks. That's true. They don't, Mike. Thank you. I'm zipping up to the top of the chat right really quickly because we just ran out of questions here and making sure um, there's no questions that I might have missed because I love to to get to your questions. Someone wrote, Chris, Christopher uh, wrote, a donut? Question mark. A donut? Yes, please. Telly giveaway. That's right, JR. Mark it on your calendar, okay? Mark it on your calendar, my friend. And, um, yeah, so there you go. Um, so here, yes, so mark it on your calendar, November the 3rd at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, friends. I'll be teaching you how to build a solid foundation in any genre of guitar, whether you're a day one newbie or you've, you're a seasoned veteran. This is what I did. As I said, what are the things that happen 99.99999% of the time when you're playing guitar? Those are our fundamentals. I don't care what genre you're in, and I don't care what level you're in, these are the things that are absolutely necessary. Let's focus on those things so that we can build a solid foundation. I would rather listen to a guitar player who is a beginner, who has a solid foundation any day of the week before an advanced player who doesn't have a solid foundation because they're going to sound like poo. And the beginner is going to sound is going to sound very very promising. So, and it's just true, okay? I've had so many students that try to leapfrog, you know, to those advanced levels right away and more of them though, however, that stick to those basics and those those folks always sound so much better. You know? Telly giveaway, that's right. Telly giveaway. And this is an American one, okay? Uh, haha, <laughs> thanks, Chuck. Hey, Chuck Jones. Uh, beautiful man and a fantastic guitar player, and I'm actually going to have him on the show here sometime. Uh, he's a fantastic guitar player and a wealth of knowledge and a hit songwriter uh, here in Nashville and just an all-around swell guy. All right, so still getting to some questions here. Looking, looking, looking. Okay, I think I've got to all of those. How can I win that guitar? Uh, oh, hold on, let's get to, yeah, how can you win this guitar? Go to your guitar stage. Wait, actually, there is a video that we just posted on YouTube. The description or the link to sign up to win this guitar and to register for the broadcast. You're going to get videos and a PDF and all that. Actually, that stuff's going up tomorrow. I think we just put one video up there today, but tomorrow I think we're going to have the link for you to download the PDF, to get all the extra videos that I'm giving you, um, to register you into the broadcast, to enter you into the contest to win more than $6,000 worth of goodies, friends. We're giving away this guitar along with many, many, many lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System, the one that you have access to today for a buck or the first 30 lessons for free, okay? You have access to all that inside the PDF today, okay? Uh, so that's how to win that, okay? Okay, all right, so now I'm bumping all the way to the bottom here again because I 
think we've got some new we got some new bits here okay and then I'm gonna bump back over to Facebook dude I've gotten to all the questions today I'm feeling pretty good I'm moving really quickly I take this uh I take this like Chinese herbal thing that comes in a glass bottle with a little straw. I don't know what it is, but it comes from China, so I'm sure it's good. Um, no, it's a Panax ginseng, and it hypes me up. It, it keeps me attentive, and it lets me go really fast so I can answer these questions very quickly. Okay. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. That's right. You can, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. The first 30, shaking my head. Thank you, Della. It's true. Um, as I'm looking for another question here, friends, take advantage of that 30 free lessons. It's there for you. I specifically created it, folks, because it got to a point uh, on Facebook and all the other places where you guys can get a hold of me where I just could not keep up with all the comments. And I'm one of those people that I... I want to help everybody. I just want to, and I want to answer every single question. But it got to a point where I was not sleeping very well because I was staying up at night literally answering all these questions. And I, got, I said, I got to do something about this. So that's why I created the free course because it answers the majority of all the questions that folks have, um, you know. Okay, my strings buzz a lot more since I tuned down, even though I, I pay special attention to finger placement. Is it worth trying thicker strings? Celeste, the thicker strings may or may not help. See, what happens is when you release the tension of your strings, because there's about approximately 110 pounds of pull that are happening from here to the, to the nut. See, there's tension, right? You've got strings holding on here and holding on here. And then when you tune them up, think about it. You're building tension. That's why when we tune a guitar up, right, we got that sound. But, but if we release that tension, now the neck wants to relieve. And so chances are you're going to get more buzzing. And because of that, the strings flap more. So Celeste, if you're really serious about playing in a drop tuning, there's a few different things that you should do. Number one, thicker strings. Because what you can do then is you can keep more tension on the strings. Okay. Think about this basic concept that I talk about in the free 30 lessons is the bigger something is, the bigger tone it will produce. Technically, I just burped. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the, the, the bigger something is, the, 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 the bigger tone it is, okay? So like a whale is not going to be like, I don't even know what a, what a high-pitched whale would sound like. It's not going to sound like that, right? A dolphin might sound like that. A whale's like, um, something like that, right? Uh, a hummingbird's like, makes these real high-pitched sounds. A mouse makes a high-pitched sound because they're, they're smaller. So their lungs and their vocal cords and everything else are much smaller. So with that being said, the bigger an object is, the lower pitch it is. So when you have a, a, a thick string, you it's going to sound lower, okay? But when you... So for instance, if you took a high E string and you put it where the low E string is and you tried to tune it to that, you'd have to tune it down so far that it would be super duper flappy. We don't want that. So the thicker strings will allow their, you to have that tension on your guitar that you're looking for, okay? Are you just looking at things in the office and in saying you love them? No, BJ, that was from, um, oh, that's right. Yeah, you got it, BJ got it. That was the other line from, uh, are you just looking in the office and saying things you love? That was from Anchorman. Thank you, BJ, for, for tracking with me there. Are you just looking at things in the office and saying you love them? I love lamp. Uh, T card. If there are two guitars playing the same song in a duet, one is finger picking and the other one is strumming. Does one lead and one follow? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Typically, the better player will lead because they're going to be typically better at timing and stuff like that. But not necessarily. All right, man. You guys got some great questions today friends 
Great. I just saw the Foo Fighters. Couldn't hear for two days. Our pros and cons of hearing. Um, our pros hard of hearing or what? Here's the deal. Here's the deal, Isan. Uh, they're not hearing that loud like you're hearing that loud. See, they're behind the speakers and they're just blasting you guys because if you're gonna go see the Foo Fighters, you don't want it. You don't want it to be all just like super quiet. You want your head blown off, right? You want to walk away going, right? That's what you want. Uh, you don't want to lose your hearing, but you you really want it to be loud and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so um, yeah, the pros. Some pros are, like Eddie Van Halen lost his hearing in one ear, or a lot of it, because he was playing so loud all the time. Uh, so don't do that, kids. Seriously, play loud, but don't play so loud that it's ridiculous, you know? I listen to stuff loud, my wife says all the time. She goes, dear God, you listen to that so loud. But it doesn't seem uncomfortable. I know when it starts feeling uncomfortable, I back it off and try to do it a little bit less than that, too. But dear Lord, I don't know why. Music sounds so much better when it's louder. Um... I guess it's like taste. If you have a lot more of something, it's so much better. Uh, so yeah, they are not listening to it that loud. In fact, they've got earbuds in, and they're listening to. Um, they're they've got ear, in ear monitors, and they can turn it down as as far as they want to. They want to go, you know. Yep, there you go, William. They have. I use eargasm at shows. Uh, pros have in ear monitors. Yeah, eargasm. Those are um, inserts that are really cool and help you to hear everything but still cut down big time on the sound. Celeste, okay, or even just a half step. Celeste, if you're tuning down just a half step, no. Um, you do not need that. You do not need new strings. You, in fact, uh, I've got a guitar in there um, that I'm playing beat it with for this upcoming show. And we're tuning down a half step like, like the kids did in this in the uh, on that song and um and i don't need to do that and i've got a tremolo system too uh sir just because of genius and honest persons like you the earth is still alive oh thank you my friend that is the sweetest ever and guys thank you so much i have to say here as i'm looking through these comments you guys have the sweetest comments i get them all the time inside the unstoppable guitar system it's crazy i wake up every morning to like 30 messages where people are just gushing about the program saying just the kindest things and it really makes me feel like i'm doing the right thing i'm gonna cheer up here in a minute uh and on youtube and on on all the places i mean it's just crazy how beautiful these messages are it's like if i ever got depressed, which I don't. Yeah, not anymore. I used to. But if I ever got to, because I changed my way of thinking. But if I ever did get depressed again, I would just have to look at those comments and be so uplifted. So thank you. That's really super sweet. How do you move up and down the fretboard playing the pentatonic scale? So obviously you can just take the scale and do this. And just keep doing the same scale, but changing the key right? Or you can play different forms of the scale, right? And there I'm playing the same scale but in different forms. I cover that in detail uh, in the free ebook that you can find at yourguitarsage.com. Uh, that's where to get it, yeah. Uh, you can also check out the pentatonic videos that I have on YouTube. Just search Your Guitar Sage Pentatonic. But that's how you do that, my friend. There's five basic forms that folks uh, play a lot. Can you explain the, the different chord progressions, rock, blues, and jazz? So Jim, there are a, an infinite amount of chord progressions. So I can't explain the different chord progressions because we'd be here for a long time. We'd be here for an infinite amount of time because there's an infinite amount of chord progressions. Just about, almost almost infinite. <laughs> it just doesn't work. But you get it. There's so many. I mean, there's so many. But I can tell you that that really the chord progressions are very similar. It's just that with jazz, you're typically embellishing chords. You're doing things like sevens, uh, sevens nines, elevens, thirteens, sixes. Uh, you're extending the, the chord um, to other notes, embellishments to make them sound fuller or different or add different melody notes and that sort of thing. Uh, so with rock and blues, you're either playing power chords or just some basic sort of fifth 
that sort of thing. But typically, um, they're all the same. Hey, Andre, what's up? Love the new guitar giveaway. Awesome. Love the new giveaway guitar. Nice. Thank you, my friend. Oh, will November 3rd live stream include the instructions for how veterans can get into the UGS for free? Stick around, Subskip. I'm thinking yes. Be there. Be there, my friend. Uh, if I'm playing in the key of... Yeah, we last year we gave away somewhere around a quarter of a million dollars of lessons to our veterans. So we, we like to do this uh, for Veterans Day to... Um, to say thank you to our veterans for putting their lives on the line, their minds on the line, they're walking away from their families to, to defend. Um, so that's what we do because it's the honorable thing to do and because I love our veterans and I thank them so much. So if you're a veteran, thank you from the bottom of my heart and that's my way of thanking you. So, um, so yes, so come to that show November the 3rd 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, okay? So we'll be giving away much over $6,000 that day. We'll be giving away lots and lots and lots. But for those who aren't veterans or are not in the military service, it's not just for veterans, for those in the military service as well. But if you're not, then we're still giving away like $6,000 worth of goodies, okay? And if that doesn't make you happy, then... I've given away the course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. And if that doesn't make you happy and you got a buck in your pocket, then you can get the entire course for a month for a buck. So there's lots of good stuff for free there, right? Both those links are in your, your PDF. Friends, share this video right now. If you have not already, please do it for your chance to win a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. This is what we do for these live broadcasts because it's what we do. It's just what we do. We give it away, okay? If I'm playing, Shane is saying, Shane Doyle on YouTube is saying, if I'm playing in the key of A minor, can I still use some chords or variations of chords that aren't listed in the chart if they sound right to me? Indeed, Shane. If you're painting a picture and you decide to paint the sun blue, well, that's up to you. It's still a painting. And if it's up in the sky and it's shining down on people, no one's going to say, what the hell's that? They're going to say, Huh, a blue sun. Maybe he's on Mars because the sun looks blue on Mars. Did you know that? It does. I don't know why, but it does. Or at least the sunset does. It's a blue sun. You can check it out on Google Images. Uh, but don't do that right now. Um, nonetheless, <coughs> pardon me. Can you use some other chords? You can. If it sounds right to you, Shane, do it. Okay. <coughs> Kara, I keep going back to the, uh, the free 30 lessons for a refresher. Nice, Kara. Love it. Yes, I've seen Carrie in there a lot. We've, we've spoken a bunch in there. Um, Joe, Ninja Master. I love the name, by the way. Uh-oh, I lost you. Where did Joe Ninja Master go? There he is. With your fingerstyle course, the $20 one, will I need to know any music theory? Joe, no, you do not. It's, te it's all based on technique, not on music theory whatsoever. With that being said, Joe, if you need to know what music theory you should learn first, then do the free course as well. So, so sure, get the get the finger style course. Do that. That's great. But make sure you get the free course as well because that'll teach you all the music theory that if I said if you only could learn this music theory and nothing else for the rest of your life, this is going to serve you more than anything else. Learn the stuff that's in there, okay? I almost got to see the Foo Fighters concert and it was canceled. Oh, suck. Okay. Okay, man, you guys are killing it today. William Leary is saying, uh, so you just, uh, okay, that was not to me, right? You just keep going if you make a mistake during practice. Okay, sorry, that's not for me. Is there a way to take the shape of lyrics and kind of force them into fit into music I have on my guitar. Yes, Shane, indeed. That's, you know, crafting. When you're crafting a song, that's what to do. So definitely, there's different ways that you can rhyme it, different ways that you can bring the lyric in to make it match, uh, maybe shoring up some words, making it longer, making it shorter. It's all malleable. So you got to think about it like clay, if you will, okay? 
Sean, depression is no joke. I struggle with it and have for years. I know, Sean, I did too. I don't think it was clinical, but I don't know. Um, I don't know the difference between the two, but I can tell you that I that, that I was way in my mind. And I swear to you, I went to one Tony Robbins seminar, I went to Date with Destiny, it absolutely changed my life. Absolutely. I didn't need to go to the seminar, or maybe I did, maybe I did, uh, but the principles are all the same. And I absolutely uh, changed my life around. So um, I was just too much in my head. I was trying to change things I couldn't change. And, um, you know, like the serenity prayer that alcoholics always talk about, right? They say uh, something about, let me be able to change the things I can change. And the things that I can't change give me the wherewithal, basically, to let go of those things. <clears throat> Crushes me to even say that. It's a beautiful because think about it. Why would we try to control something that we can't do anything about anyhow? It's crazy. It's, it's maddening. So why would we do that? Um, because we think we can change stuff that we can't change. Um, so it's good to take inventory of those things. The stuff you can change, change them. Put, pour all your energy into everything that you can change to make your life better and to make other people's lives better. And for the things you can't change, Okay, I'm a big animal advocate. I know there's terrible things happening to animals, terrible things happening to, to, to children. I love children. I love animals. I love innocence. I love kindness. And, and I know there's things going on. And I have to let go of that at night. If not, I don't sleep. And that's what I used to do is not sleep. I'd sleep for just two, three hours a night because I was going around in my mind all the time. But eventually, you got to say, okay, here's the things I can change. Here's the things I cannot change. And... Um, and you change the things you can. Ah, there you go. If you paint a, if you paint a blue sun, it won't look weird, just like a Janis uh, Joplin album cover. There you go, see? Uh, new subscriber here from the Philippines. Any tips for, for better guitar tone, Mong is saying. Yeah, Mong. Okay, so uh, in regards to electric guitar, which is probably what you're talking about, um, you know, I love tube amps. I love a 12-inch speaker. Not a lot of effects, but just enough to, to get by. Um, that's where to start. Start with a, a decent guitar. Um, I've got lots of stuff about tone inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Mung, if you want to check that out, I have, I have something called The Ultimate Pursuit of Tone inside the Unstoppable Guitar System where I meet with my guitar tech, uh, Greg Ellis, who helps me buy all my guitars and amps and sets them up, tweaks them, modifies them, all the rest. And he um, goes over all this with me. Together, we talk about all the different things that are covered in tone. You can get a hold of that and a thousand something other videos and 600 jam tracks for $1 today. The link for that's in the description or it's in, it's in your PDF that you can download today in the description of the video, okay? Uh, anybody has questions, just leave them right here inside the, inside the chat here if you're, you know, you need more help with that, you know? <laughs> Do your homework on Tony Robbins. Please Google Tony Robbins scam. TBA number one. Type in your guitar sage scam. Type in Jesus scam. Type in Buddha scam. Type in truth scam. Okay? You're going to find someone saying everything's a scam. Tony Robbins is the real freaking deal. I followed that guy for, for, for decades. There's always somebody trying to knock somebody good down. I have people all day long trying to knock me down inside of the Unstoppable, not inside the Unstoppable, on, on Google, okay, on, 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 on YouTube. There's always naysayers, my friend. Do not, you got to go with the majority, okay? You find an Amazon good, you find something that you want to buy, and you got 700 people saying it's great, you got one person saying it's crap, and people go, oh, it's crap, that one guy said it's crap, and you got 700 people saying something's awesome. I promise you, you do your, your, your research on Tony. That guy is a beast, and he is a hell of a man, and he is an amazing philanthropist. Um, when, when I, the last one that I went to, the last, or not the last one, but one a couple before that, he raised over $1 million, 250000 of it straight out of his pocket, raised a million dollars in about 10 minutes' time for children in the sex trade industry. Okay, so that's hardly a scam. That guy has already done, in that one moment, did more for the world than 
probably many of us put together. Definitely more than I've done. So in one, one, one moment. So if that's a scam, sign me up. I'm all about that scam. Um, does he charge a lot for his stuff? Yeah, because it's the friggin' best. Do I charge a lot for my stuff? Yeah, I do, because it's the best. I mean, or it's not. It either is or it's not to you. So, like, if someone's going to come visit me and they're going to take guitar lessons from me, I'm charging a lot because my, my time is worth a lot, okay? And if you don't feel that, that's okay. You don't have to buy it. So, But I'm telling you, if you do not look into Tony Robbins, uh, that guy has some amazing stuff. It's life-changing stuff. It's up to you. You do whatever you want to do. But I've followed that guy for a long time, and he is the real deal. What do I think of the Blues Junior? I love it so much that I have two of them. The best little tube amp that I've ever found, okay? It's, a, it's got a 12-inch speaker. It's a beast, okay? Am I sleeping better now, Rick? I sleep like the dead. I sleep so good now, it's not even funny, okay? Um, I really sleep wonderfully. Um, yes, yes. I'll say it again. Do your homework. Overgeneralizations are not answers or reality. Do your homework, please. My friend, I have done lots of homework on it. And again, overgeneralizations, that's what you're getting. Um, when you have, when you have 10,000 people saying somebody's good and you got one guy saying he's not, I'll listen to the 10,000. Okay. But I appreciate your concern for me, but go to one of his seminars and then do it. Okay. It's way too easy to get brainwashed by a cult. Okay. Okay. Trust me. Um, I won't say any more about that. Um, okay. If it works for him and he likes it, who gives a crap? Um, okay. Yes. Okay. So there you go. Um, so I think I got to most of those questions there in TBA1. If you, if you feel that way, that's great. That's totally fine. Um, I actually feel that confident that I... I want people to be happy. I want people to learn guitar. I want them to have joy. Why wouldn't we want that for the world, right? We want this for the world. We want the best things for people. So I'm not going to sit there and tout anything, whether it's a scale or a, or, a, or a course or saying, hey, this person. I mean, I get nothing to say that Tony Robbins is, is great. That guy has absolutely changed my life. And for those who have, who have followed my stuff for a long time, they've seen me change since I've gone to these seminars as well. They've said it specifically okay so indeed so if i'm brainwashed then i'm happy as hell being brainwashed i'm super happy okay and uh and if that means that because of my brainwashing i give hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of wonderful things away and help people and do live broadcasts and what have you that's not a bad brainwashing is it i think brainwashing is bad when if uh, if you are lazy and if you harm people, if you harm animals and you do terrible things and you're not helping the world, that's a bad brainwashing, right? Um, but my friend, if you think you're not being brainwashed by Google, by YouTube, by Facebook, by every single advertisement that comes on TV and you think that Tony Robbins is the guy that's brainwashing, then you've been brainwashed because it's happening all the time. It's just you get to choose what you what you what you're bringing in in here, okay, and into here. This is the more important bit, okay. All right, friends, I love you guys. Thank you so much for all the great questions. Um, you guys rule, and um, I'm here to help you. So please let me know how I can help you. We went extra long today again. I just can't get it down to one hour. Um, I try, but I can't seem to do it. So here's what I got for you today, friends. Um, you got the free course, you got the dollar course. Um, I'll brainwash all of y'all in there to, to become better guitar players. I'm messing with you, TBA1. Uh, but I will. I will teach you how to play guitar by brainwashing you. Look into my eyes. And um, so I have that for you today. The live broadcast, giving this baby away along with $6,000 worth of goodies. That's going to be on November the 3rd at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, where I'll be teaching you how to build a solid foundation in any genre of guitar, whether you're a day one newbie or you're a seasoned veteran. Um, what else do I have for you? I got other stuff. Um, you know where to find me, okay? Check out the links that are in that PDF for the, the information on the courses. And uh, if you haven't already, Here's me riding a T-Rex. See ya. In the train, I told